So fairly recently, I was all of a sudden overcome with a fear of dying of cancer. Now, to the best of my knowledge, I don't have, and I've never had cancer, but, but that fear was all of a sudden real for me. And I, what really happened was that I, I had some medical condition that the current medication I was on wasn't working very well, so my doctor recommended a new course of treatment. So we talked about it for a little while, told me to go home, think about it, and get back to him. So it wasn't something that I, I didn't know about. I'd seen commercials for it on TV, but along with the commercials and any medication you see on TV, there's this long list of possible side effects. So I searched online. The first thing I saw were message boards filled with people talking about how they had cancer from taking this medication. So right away, that's terrifying. I mean, why would I want to take a medication that gives me cancer? I mean, I'm certainly taking it for a reason. I need some kind of health benefit of it, but that seems to outweigh that a little bit. So having a background statistics, though, I tried to, to rationalize what I was seeing here. So there's probably a lot of extreme bias in what I was reading online. These people were maybe the extreme cases. They had very bad and unfortunate situations with the medication. But people that might have had good situations or it helped them or maybe it didn't do anything for them, they probably aren't as likely to talk about it. So to help me kind of calm my fears, I realized I need to look up and get more data on this topic, try to understand what the situation is. So I started looking into medical journals. Now, I'm not a medical professional, so I'm a lay person here, so I was trying to understand what I found. And I found an article in the Journal of the American Medical Association, about a decade old, but it had a study of 3,000 people on this medication. And what they found was that people taking it were three times likely to develop forms of cancer. So that, again, didn't really help my concerns, but I try to think of that a little bit. And it's probably a small number that were developing cancers, and three times a small number is still pretty small. But I wanted to look a little further, and I found a more recent study that looked at a lot more participants. So it was in the Annals of Rheumatoid Disease. And it was a study that kind of combined 20,000 plus people that are on this medication and found that a little under 300 had developed forms of cancer. So I finally had some kind of number there. This like one percentage of people were developing cancers on this medication. But that doesn't mean everyone who uses it has a 1% chance. There's some kind of distribution of how likely you are to develop cancer. Am I the typical person? Typical in the sense that I have that 1%? Am I more likely, less likely? I don't really know. It's chances are I'm younger than most people on it. It's used to treat something that often happens in elderly people. So maybe that makes me less likely. Maybe I'm younger, so I'd be on it longer, which makes me more likely. I'm not sure, but I fall somewhere in that spectrum where the typical person has that 1% likelihood. But what would really help me to understand it is they talked about a matched population in this study. And a matched population, all they did was they looked at the 20,000 people that took the medication, and they compared the cancer rates to a similar group of people. So similar in age, gender, and some other factors, and found that whether you're on the medication or not, you aren't really more likely to develop cancer. So that made me sit a little, feel a little better until it really sank in that it doesn't matter if I take, take that or not, I still have that 1% chance according to these studies. So what I did was I started looking online trying to figure out, well, what other chances of killing me do things have? So it's probably not the best thing to look at, but I did, and I found the Insurance Information Institute, which is not a peer-reviewed journal like the others I looked at. It's an industry group, so I'm, I'm not quite as sure if I can trust the data in the way I trusted the other two, but they gave fatality odds. They had some kind of calculation where they looked at how many deaths there were in various things over the course of a year, and they used that to calculate how likely over the course of your life were, you were to die from these things. So up here I had that 1% chance of getting cancer. Much less likely was getting struck by lightning. But as I kind of veered closer, it wasn't that far away of drowning in a pool while swimming. But as I got close and found something with very similar odds, I was pretty surprised. And it said that very similarly are the chances that I'll get cancer while on this medication to dying in a car accident. I don't think I've ever had to sit down and rationalize myself, am I okay with driving today, given there's a 1% chance that I could get killed in my lifetime doing it? I just took it for granted. I do it most days. I get to work that way. I travel. I have to drive. So if I took it for granted in that way that I wasn't all that concerned about dying in an accident, it kind of helped me understand, well, 
maybe I, I feel okay about taking this medication or my chances of getting cancer possibly from it. So you might not be in the same situation where you have to evaluate data in this way for a medical condition, but you may have to for other things such as, I don't know, making a major purchase, voting an election, or something similar to that. So what I did here, I didn't use a huge math background to come up with my ideas here. I used my statistical literacy, which is just trying to understand data that's out there, evaluate it, see, can I trust this data, and make some kind of decision with it. In this case, I just found some numbers online and was able to make these kind of decisions. So I was able to look at my emotions and the anecdotes that I saw online about this drug, what the data was really saying, and try to find some kind of harmony between those two to make me understand the situation. So I, I implore you all to think about things that way and try to look at it when you have some kind of these strong emotions about things and anecdotal evidence that think if there's data out there that you can try to make some sense of and see how they match together. The one unfortunate part of that is now I kind of have a, a fear of dying in a car accident. But thank you. <laughs>